my husband. He was such my husband was such a Kiss fan, and he was like, "Oh my gosh!" So this genie is introducing this gene, and he doesn't need any introduction, I don't think. So. Takes me, uh, <clears throat> it's very personal to me. Let me start off by saying, Kobe's here, my brother is from Israel. And in the language of my forefathers and a culture that goes back 6,000 years, Hashem Shalit Sayyid, then in Alakdi Bahaifa. I was born. I was born in Israel, but I want to tell you that uh, as inspirational as Jeannie's message was about her wonderful mom and other people in World War II who were not talked about, who risked life and limb to save people who worshipped differently and maybe looked different, and that is the nature of love, I believe, that Jeannie was talking about. The headline is, a Roman Catholic Polish woman was willing to risk her life, which could have been snuffed out at any moment, to save people who were different than she was, Jews. She would risk all for a higher ideal. She's a better person than I will ever be. And it is important to honor people like that because the world needs more love. I want to say, the following. While we're here to talk about anti-Semitism, hatred knows no color, creed, religion, or groups of people. Really. My people, the people I'm proud to share the DNA with, gave all the rest of you the Bible. We also gave you the Ten Commandments and the New Testament, and anti-Semitism is anti-humanism. It starts Hatred, do love thy neighbor as thyself. What a fucking good idea. <laughs> when you allow an off-color joke, and even there, there's questionable use of the language, the idea that you could love somebody who looks different than you are, talks differently with a different accent, comes from a different place, that's the only hope humanity has. Otherwise, we're going back to tribalism. We have to look a certain way, speak a certain language, pray to a certain God, and we're going back to chaos. I'm not going to take a long time uh, to be up here and get a lot of attention, and besides, you guys aren't paying me. <laughs> My mother was 14 years of age when she was in the concentration camps of Nazi Germany. To people who don't believe it happened, Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> the stories my mother told me, I never met grandmothers and grandfathers or my mother's brothers or anything because they were all wiped out in World War II in front of my mother's eyes in ways that you cannot imagine. If you've never been to the Holocaust Museum here or in Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, you can walk across a glass floor with children's shoes, thousands and thousands of them, and gold and false teeth. These bastards used to skin human beings alive and do all kinds of experiments and you don't want to get into what forms hatred can take. But I want to say that reaching out your hand isn't so hard, especially to somebody who on the surface may look different than you or speak a different language or even pray to a different God. Who cares? Either we're going to live on this planet and recognize the humanity in all of us, or anti-Semitism is the same as Islamophobia, as gay hatred, hating African Americans or anybody else, and it all begins with hate speech. 
when you allow an asshole to spew hatred without taking out your six, you know, they used to have six shooters in the old west. What did you say? Bang. Now you've got your own. Take out your goddamn cell phone, turn it on, and all you've got to do is what this good looking, powerful, and attractive man is doing. <laughs> is pointed at that asshole, get that image up on TikTok, Schmicktock, and all the rest, <laughs> and then that person will not be able to hide like the cockroach he or she or any other version is. What makes cockroaches run away in your kitchen is when you turn on the light. They'll hide behind the, the refrigerator, and it's our job to pull the refrigerator aside and find out where those cockroaches live. Don't let hatred spread. Hitler didn't start by killing people. He started with hate speech. He started by spewing hatred which caught on and people started believing it. There's a new guy. He started spewing you know, hatred that this guy in the Ukraine is a Nazi and stuff. The asshole didn't realize that the leader of the country is actually a Jew whose parents were all wiped out in World War II. He's going to pay a price. This is not a political diatribe. Somebody within, in my view, is going to take this guy out because I have lots of Russian friends who are unfortunately caught up in this madman scheme. Hatred is not a part of yesterday. It exists today in all forms. Don't let hatred spread. Now, I've been fortunate. I, I came to America with my mother who lived to be 94 years of age, despite the fact that she saw all the hatred you could ever imagine and just astonishing forms of inhumanity of man against man. And yet my mother's everyday abiding principle was every day above ground is a good day especially in America. I know it's got problems, racism and anti-Semitism and all kinds of isms, but at least here we can speak up. At least here you, at least here you have equal access to social media, even though babies talk while I'm doing that. Not a lot of my house. If you have a cell phone, that's your ultimate weapon. Turn it on shine a light on hatred. Now, I want to tell you that I've had the, the life of Riley, as they used to say. I live in America, I've worked hard and climbed the ladder of success. We do okay. I want to introduce you to an important person, far more important than I am, who's going through the gauntlet of hatred because she dared reach her hand out to somebody who speaks differently, and worships differently just because she wanted to be nice, because she's a human being. May I bring you up and embarrass you? Oh my gosh. Oh my God. You can introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are, what your story is, and your things, and all that stuff. Okay? We just met, by the way. Okay. Thank you so much. Want me to take that baby outside? <laughs> Um, wow, I did not expect to speak today, but I'm really glad and I would like to introduce myself. My name is Sarah Edan. I am from Iraq, but I am Muslim. Um, in 2017, I represented my country, Iraq, in Miss Universe. I was Miss Iraq. And I took a selfie with a friend that I met there. Her name is Adar Gandelsman. She was Miss Israel. And basically all we did, like we met at a photo shoot and we took the selfie and then she was really afraid to approach me. The Miss Israel like organization, they told her, don't, we, don't talk to the Arab countries because they will get in trouble. And it was really weird, you know, she did not approach me. Everyone else approached me and talked to me except for her. So I waved at her, then she, you know, she came, she talked to me, she's like, and she told me about why she did not approach me. And I said, I felt really embarrassed. And I said, why? I said, if anything, like we are here, we're peace ambassadors, we need to set a good example for the young women. So we need to take a picture and show that we don't have any problem. So we took a selfie that captioned peace and love from 
Miss Iraq and Miss Israel, and I posted on Instagram. Um, little did I know that the next morning I would wake up with my phone blowing up. My family had to leave Iraq within three days after that photo. And I got death threats from Hamas, from people online. And there were all these conspiracy theories. They thought that I was secretly Jewish and I was CIA because they you know, they searched some of my old photos when I was in Iraq and I worked for the US military as a translator. And they said, oh, she's from Tel Aviv, she's a Jew, she's CIA. And yeah, and basically I was getting a lot of hate, a lot of anti-Semitism. People, they thought I was Jewish. So I got all the messages and comments saying Hitler should have finished the job. Um, you are cursed by God, you are this and that. And that was the moment I found out what anti-Semitism is, what Jew hatred was. So when I saw all of that, I kept trying to talk to the people and I refused to delete the photo. And be, you know, because I didn't delete the photo, this is why if you, if you look at the Miss Iraq organization website right now, I don't even exist. <laughs> they removed me, but you know, thank God the whole world know I'm on Wikipedia, I'm on Google, even though they tried to erase me from the history. And, you know, like, after that, thank God, like, I learned so much about, you know, the Jewish history. Like, I even found out we had Iraqi Jews who were massacred during the Farhud and during World War II. Our prime minister traveled to Germany and he, he uh, took a photo with, uh, there's a photo of him with Hitler shaking hands. He went to the concentration camps and when he returned to Iraq, he massacred the Iraqi Jewish people, and this is why they left Iraq. So basically, you know, the Miss Iraq organization and the Iraqi government, who, by the way, they took away my citizenship, but I'm still Iraqi. Um, they like they tried to do the same thing that they did to the Iraqi Jews. They tr they're trying to erase me from history, but thanks, you know, to social media, thanks to the news, thanks to you guys, to everyone. You know, everyone knows that I'm here and I exist and I'm Iraqi, I'm Arab, I'm Muslim, and I want to defend the Jewish people. And, I just want to say that, listen, with all, all the hate that I'm facing, like I, I always say this, um, when, uh, when AJC, when they tried to bring me to Israel the first time, um, all my friends that I knew, who are some of them, they were Jewish, they told me not to go because they said, if you go to Israel, this would be the end of your life, having any re like relationship or anything with the Arabs, so you can't go. But then the AJC told me that there is not a single Iraqi that they could bring from Iraq to speak about peace. And I thought, you know what, I'm in the United States, I'm privileged, I'm lucky, I've got my American citizenship, I gotta, I gotta use it. I gotta use my privilege. So this is what I would say to the people today. Um, you are blessed, you are lucky to be here, and you just gotta use your privilege because there are so many people, like you said, like people around the world, they don't have this privilege, we can't speak. If I was in Iraq, I would be killed within a day. So we are lucky, and yeah, this is what I would say, use your privilege here and, you know, and keep fighting. So I just want to thank you on par, Gene Smith, Gene Simmons, the former Miss Iraq. I can't think of another organization that would say all four of those names for the same event. <laughs> <laughs> Which is my segue in saying if you want to support the Righteous Among the Nations project, if you want to support Arms for Israel and combat anti-Semitism, those who put this project together, please do so. Artistsforisrael.org slash donate, or you can visit Righteous, or you can scan the codes that are all over here. And I want to thank everybody would you please fucking slow down so people can understand the dot com? <laughs> What's the name of the dot com? Slowly. Not all of us are from Israel. Some of us are from New York. We talk to you. <laughs> In Haifa, they have time to enunciate, right? In Brooklyn, it's artistsforisrael.org slash donate. Artistsforisrael.org slash righteous. It's the number four and it's artists, plural. There's QR codes there and there. 
and to learn more about Irene's story, although I think you have the best primary source here today, there's QR codes on the wall as well. So feel free to support the project. Jean, thank you so much. Jeannie, thank you so much. Elon, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the night considering all the things we've heard, but let's just all be one.